Hey everyone, this is Olive. I'm Mike, and where's Charlie? I'm here. It's Charlie. Welcome to Bax's Balls. Today, we're gonna to talk about feeding these guys right here. This is all of our leopard pinstripe pied, and she's a ball python, and we're gonna talk, like I said, all about feeding these guys. Uh, there, There's no set list of do's and don'ts and what works and what doesn't. Uh, things change a lot from location to location. Uh, it, like I'm in Southern Ontario. Uh, if you're in California, it's gonna be different. If you're up north, uh, in Edmonton, uh, Winnipeg, what, it's it's different everywhere. So try variations, so you get a lot of people's input and figure out what works for you. are afraid of getting bit by your snake when you're feeding them, then the best option is to use these. Thongs? Yeah. Um, you pick it up by the scruff of the neck or the tail and you um, just dangle it over. Um, you dangle it in front of the yeah. snake like it's a live mouse or rat. Mm -hmm. Um, now your hand is away from whatever you're feeding to your snake and so you don't get bit, which is probably unlikely, but if you're afraid, then just use um, the tongs. Now we're going to talk about red size. Big sizes. Small sizes. Hmm. Okay, so this is our snake, Alex. She will take a weaned rat or a small, small rat, and our girl Olive here will take a large, small rat or a small, medium rat. And the way we gauge that is the thickest part of their bodies. You want to go by that. If they're just little like this guy here, or girl, sorry, then you want to give something smaller, and that thickness is about a weaned rat, large weaned rat, or a small, small rat. And here, that's about the thickness of a small, medium rat, or a large, small rat. And that's how you gauge that. Now the type of food you can feed bull pythons are mice, rats, and ASFs. Now, when you'd want to feed mice is when they're hatchlings. Uh, it, I don't even use mice unless I have to when they're hatchlings. I just generally go for uh, fuzzy rats, uh, babies. They've got a little bit of fur on them. I, I believe the fur helps stimulate the, the rat or stimulates the snake's uh, feeding uh, feeding response. But a lot of people use baby mice for that. Uh, fuzzies, pinkies are a little too small in my opinion, uh, unless you have a snake that you're going to have to force feed. Um, for a hatchling, um, a pinky is a, just a little bit too small because when they're babies, they are just like that tiny. Pinkies are just that tiny, which won't give them enough nutrition, so they will go for fuzzies because they're bigger than pinkies. And we just went over rat sizes a second ago. Now there's ASFs, African Soffer Rats. Uh, if you can feed these guys African Soffer Rats, uh, it, they're all the much better for it, I believe. Uh, there's a couple girls that I have that only eat African software rats, very picky. Uh, that's one reason we're making this video is these guys can be very picky eaters. We'll get into that in a bit. Uh, now, African software rats, they don't need to be... Uh, she's getting away from me back here. They don't need to be quite as big as the rats as they're leaner. They have more protein uh, and they just digest better for the snakes. They get way more out of it, so they can be smaller. Uh, I'll show a picture of uh, it, the difference in rat sizes to ASF sizes uh, right now.
So as you've seen there, ASFs don't get as large as rats. Uh, but that being said, they have a higher nutritional value. There's more protein, the meat is leaner, uh, so they won't retain as much fat as what they would in a, a rat. And they just, I find that they grow a lot faster and their body condition is fantastic. ASFs, they also poop less. So the room stinks less. That's great. <laughs> we love that. Uh, the only problem with ASFs, it's said that some animals can get stuck on them. Like I do have one here that will eat nothing but ASFs. Uh, some of the others, I feed them ASFs every now and then. They have no problem going back, be back and forth between rats and ASFs. So uh, I suggest that giving them an ASF every now and then is good. It just sort of switches up their meals. Uh, it keeps them more, uh, their feeding response a bit more heightened. Uh, but like I said, some, uh, some people do say that you can get a snake stuck on ASF. So be careful if you are doing that uh, and just figure out whether or not you want to take the chance that as much AS or ASFs are much harder to find. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about feeding. Uh, there's two ways of doing it, live or frozen thought. Uh, if you're gonna do live, you just gotta be careful. Uh, I wouldn't uh, follow the snake's thickness for it. Um, it's mostly for like frozen thought that you do that. Um, but with the live, um, you don't wanna go any um, larger than a small, um, it's because, um, um, anything bigger than a small can um, hurt the snake and um, probably bite the snake and hurt them. And do a lot of damage. So if you are feeding live, just keep an eye on it. Uh, keep an eye on the snake, keep an eye on the rat. Uh, and make sure that it's, it's not going to attack or bite your snake, which has definitely been known to happen. Uh, rats can have a tendency to bite. Um, it happened one time. Um, well, it was very close to happening with one of our snakes when we were feeding them. It was live. Um, I'm pretty sure we were feeding, well, I don't know, I don't remember. But um, the rat was very close to biting, the, biting um, our snake. Um, I can't really remember if it did or not, but um, we're, we're glad, I'm glad that we were watching the rat. That if we weren't, then maybe our snake could have had scratches on it. Scarred, hurt, real bad. Mm -hmm. Now, the other way uh, is frozen thawed. Uh, now, there's a, a few ways to do this. I'll tell you the way that I do it. And if you like it, give it a try. It's worked great for me. I uh, had a, a, another breeder tell me about this and it was far easier than what I was doing. And I'm glad I asked for the advice because it has made my feeding days so much easier. So if you have weaned rats, uh, if you're doing weaned rats, you get a tub similar to this and you just put whatever you're in, weaned rats, small rats. If you got a lot of rats, use a bigger tub, whatever. Uh, weaned rats, put them in there and it's 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yeah. 10 minutes of hot water. Not uh, ridiculously scolding hot water. You're not trying to cook them, you're trying to thaw them. So you want it pretty hot, but not ridiculously hot. Uh, then small rats. Um, you're gonna, um, after like 10 minutes in the water, um, you're gonna change um, the water into new, um, fresh, what do you Fresh say? hot water. Fresh hot water. Um, and then you're gonna put them in for another 10 minutes. So that'll be 10 minutes for weans, 20 minutes with freshly changed hot water halfway through, and pending the uh, mediums, I'll do 20 minutes. If it's a large medium, uh, I'll do 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, large will be somewhere around the same. Uh, that's, that's usually getting into uh, if my boa constrictor, well, I'll do large and so on. Sometimes I'll even give her just mediums, but that's what I do for that, and it works fantastically. Uh, the only thing about it, I don't do that in bags. So yes, the rats do get wet. So when I'm taking them out, just get these feeding tongs here. Here, you hold onto those. Get the feeding tongs, and I just pick them up, let them drip off for a second. Then I just have some paper towel on the ground, put them on the paper towel, and mold out on the ground on a table, sorry. 
and then I get some paper towel and just dab them on top. Um, like I um, said, um, you're just gonna dang them um, over um, the snake to make it um, think that it's alive. Yes, you wanna you wanna move it around. You don't wanna just drop it in there in front of it. You wanna dangle in front, make it move. It, it's some sort of stimulation for the snake uh, to uh, get it to respond to it like it's hunting. Uh, some snakes, they it, if they don't respond to it, they're just gonna not uh, look at it at all. You just drop it in there, and then you close the tank, you close the tub, and you walk away, and they don't wanna see you again and then they'll just eat it on their own time. And I have a few of those snakes that just will not take from me on any level, never have, uh, probably never will. But when I go check the tub later on, it's gone. So you'll figure out what works for you on your own, but as far as thawing them out and uh, how I feed them, that's what we do. So if you guys have any more questions about uh, what should I do uh, in this circumstance, I have this animal about this size, they're not eating, uh, something I did talk about that uh, you, you want more information on or you got questions about it or something that I just plain old didn't talk about that you're like hey what about this drop it in the comments and I'll get right back to you and uh, we'll talk about it or maybe it may it I'll get back to you and we'll make the next video about it or something uh, always down for the comments and the questions so like and subscribe share too Bye.